Welcome, everybody, to Left Tool Studios. We're back with another podcast-style episode. It's not really a podcast, right? So this is just going on YouTube. But we have a very special guest. You may know him as the Grass Factor. You may know, know him as, what is it, Heisen Turf? Heisenfurt? <laughs> what is it? You haven't heard that? That's a thing, Matt. No, what is it? What are you talking about? That's you. What? Yeah, Heisenfurt. No, Heisen Turf. Or Heisenfurt. I don't know. Which one do you like better? I, I'll, I'll take either. Bigger, beggars can't be choosers. Whatever. Heisenturf. I like Heisenturf. Heisenturf. Matt, the Grass Factor Martin is here with us to talk about Plant Growth Regulator. How you so I've got questions and I'm looking for answers. Yeah, I'll do my best to answer as, as completely as possible. I feel like... So I'm a noob. I'm a noob. I'm still getting, getting my toes wet with all this lawn care stuff, figuring it out as I go. I used my first plant growth regulator the other day, old Johnny Ware, Scott Price, but John Ware, and they were telling me that uh, it was going to change my life. Do you agree? A hundred percent. Yes, it will change your life. So there's all these benefits. Everybody will just say, oh, it does this and it does this and it does this. All these crazy good things. And I have yet to hear a bad thing, but I will share my experience. Well, let's go through the, let's go through the benefits first. What, what does plant growth regulator do that's good for your grass, my grass? It, it, it's it's kind of complicated, but it's actually very simple. All right. So the whole premise behind them is... Uh, you're suspending gibberellic acid in the plant. Gibberellic acid is going to be the hormone that encourages upward growth, right? It's so that's what the plant is is using when it's reaching for light. That's all gibberellic acid. By suspending gibberellic acid in the plant, the rest of plant function continues as normal. It's just not reaching upward as aggressively. So the benefits usually come from that when you maintain it, especially at a low height of cut or anywhere where you're trying to minimize the amount of damage that occurs from mowing, a lot of that damage is alleviated. So therefore, over a longer period of time, you're putting less stress on that plant and allow it to just function without having to constantly regenerate, constantly repair the damage that's taken place from, well, cutting it. So... I think the the main thing, like you said, it, it doesn't grow up as fast and people will say it grows out more. Tell me a little bit about how it grows out more. Be like, cause that's a, it's a kind of a, a statement that just gets thrown out there. It makes it not grow up as much and it grows out. So it thickens up faster. So tell me a little bit more about the details behind that statement. Yes. Yeah, so as a product, it's not like you apply growth regulator and it's going to miraculously start growing outwardly. There's no physiological response from, uh, from Trinexapac Athel that tells the plant to move laterally. That, that just doesn't happen. But what does happen is by putting less stress on the plant through cutting and the rest of those energy processes taking place in the plant, then oftentimes it will move laterally at a higher rate just because it's not under the amount of stress and not as much of the resources are being used to repair the injury that's taking place through cutting. Okay. So when we talk about spreading sideways faster, is each stalk of grass growing out this way? So more leaves on each stalk. I've seen the picture, I think it was John Ware. It's been about a year, but this video was out and he put his, his yard, he took up a little stalk of grass and had plant growth regulator. He uses it regularly takes his neighbors and puts it right next to each other. This one's tall and scraggly and has, you know, blades sort of spread out. His is all really packed together and the leaves are coming out of the stalk, all just really tightly spaced. So are we talking about spreading out on one stalk of grass or what about stolons and rhizomes? Do those go faster or slower? Yeah, so it's all still going to be about the same pace, but it would all have to do with how you manage your mowing, right? So it's not going to spread laterally technically any faster if you can maintain the right mpk levels and the right mowing practices it's going to spread the same rate whether you have a growth regulator on it or not the difference being is that there's usually less of that mechanical cultural practice the less of uh being so precise with every move you make on the turf species because again you're not putting so much stress on it by 
having to continually injure the plant and injure the plant and injure the plant. I'll give you an example. So a lot of times what, what people will do is they will start regulation coming out of a scalp, right? Because initially, when you first scalp the grass, the first thing the grass is going to do is start reaching upward for light to generate green leaves so carbohydrate production, photosynthesis, can kick back on. And so what will happen is, is that you'll hit this weird period right out of a scalp where initially it's all upright growth, all upright growth, just to try and get the leaf tissue back. If you start it right then, you start your PGR right then, where it's no longer moving upright and upward, and you still resume cutting at that height, then you're not creating new injury at that point for it to reach upward, reach upward, reach upward. And so what happens is, is that the plant actually takes a breath of fresh air, it relaxes a little bit, and then it can go ahead and start moving laterally at its normal pace that it would just because it's not, it's not being forced to move up hormonally within the plant. So I, I think I've heard somebody say before that if you have a bare spot, I got, a, I got a two spring dead spot areas in my yard and they're still brown. Would, so I applied it. I, did, I went ahead and did the PGR. So it's not going to make it go any slower. But to say that PGR will make that fill in faster is also probably false. It's just not going to change it, the speed at which you'll fill in a bare spot. Yes. Yes. It's, it's probably not going to happen any faster. And you could track it side by side. But I would say that if you wanted to track it side by side is the area that is not regulated with PGR, just don't cut it and monitor how fast it fills back in versus your area with PGR, with it being mode, and how fast it fills back in. It will probably be at about the same rate. Pretty close to the same. So that's because that's the, I felt like one of the myths that I had heard was that it makes it, I think that's the statement that gets thrown out there. It makes your grass grow up less and out more. And so everybody thinks that we're actually encouraging lateral growth and making it spread faster when that's not exactly the case. But it's not gonna slow it down, so I mean, Yet the most important aspect of managing lateral spread of turf is managing adequate MPK values. With above and beyond, that is the only thing that truly matters. At that point, where you start manipulating the plant becomes in how you maintain it, right? And so the lower you maintain that turf, obviously, uh, you, you don't want to cut off so much of it at one time because you start to really stress out that plant to move upward again. Whereas if it's regulated and it's not being freaked out by the, the amount of scalping that takes place, it allows it to function just normally and move outwardly like it normally would. So what are the other benefits of PGRs? So the rest of them are kind of anecdotal at best, where you, you may hear some people say, well, there's, there's a, um, a decreased reliance on, you, you can drop your NPK levels because it's not going to require as much NPK to uh, stimulate color response. Uh, and the reason there is that the chlorophyll has been so compressed within that plant that it naturally has a bit of a darker color. Uh, does it actually take away the MPK needs of the plant? No, it doesn't. It's just from a color perspective, you may be able to reduce your nitrogen rates uh, and still achieve the same level of color. Uh, in that same regard is that you're not stimulating so much growth. Therefore, anecdotally, the plant isn't necessarily going to require as much water. You'll hear some people even say that it will reduce the amount of disease because you'll get a thicker cellular structure within the plant, and that in turn will make the plant more disease resistant. But a lot of times, again, anecdotal at best because a lot of the diseases are actually soil born and not exactly uh, foliarly born. So, okay, because I have heard all those things, <laughs> yeah. all yeah. those others. So they're not really like direct responses from applying PGR. Yeah, and there, there hasn't been a lot of data back science that says, yes, 100% it alleviates water requirements. Yes, 100% it alleviates uh, disease pressure. All of it has just been under very specific circumstances. It's been seen before, not necessarily repeatable across any and every scenario. 
So then trinexapac ethyl is the one you mentioned earlier. T-nex is what seems to be the most popular. Is there something else out there that's better or for a different purpose or what are the, because I know there's a ton of them, but T-nex is the only one I ever hear anything about. Yeah. So they're kind of classified into two groups, right? You have one that is root absorbed and then you have one that is foliarly absorbed. They both work on gibberellic acid pathways, but one is considered a group one. And normally it has a longer period of suppression and a, a, usually a more aggressive period of suppression. And then your group twos like Trinax pack ethyl uh, are, they don't quite knock it in, knock back the growth so much. And, um, not for quite as long of a period of time as, as, as well. So the other ones used in turf would be like Trimit, which is Paclobutrazol. Uh, it's, it's very hard on Bermuda grass. Uh, it tends to do better on uh, your bent grass species or even uh, your cool season grasses. And then one of the newer ones, at least in terms of uh, being readily available, is a new by uh, New Farm. And what's really interesting about that one compared to, say, uh, Trimit, they're both, you know, group ones, both work on gerbilic acid, both work through the root system, is that it doesn't have quite such a steep curve of suppression and then such a steep rebound out of suppression. So the advantage there is that uh, where normally when you apply a growth regulator and it runs its course and it runs out, you get a rebound period where it'll grow faster than it would even if you hadn't applied a growth regulator. Hmm. So with a new, when it comes out of regulation, that rebound period is much less aggressive if even noticed at all. Gotcha. Okay. So I guess T next is, is that more like, I guess as far as homeowners, you know, this is something, I don't know if I'd say new, but people who are real mowing their grass all love plant growth regulator. It's been used on golf courses for a long, long, long time. And that's what we're trying to do is emulate what, you know, make our lawn look like a golf course. That's what, the look that we're going for there. And so we try to do all the same things that they do. What are some of the, the cons? What are some of the, are there any bad like negatives to PGR? Yeah, so the most obvious one is overregulation. Uh, if you overregulate the turf, you run into a serious issue that's going to uh, overregulation. Number one is going to cause discoloration. Uh, number two, it's going to last for a long period of time, right? So for 28 days, whatever discoloration you cause, it's not going anywhere. It's not going to grow out like Bermuda grass normally does, it's just going to kind of linger. Uh, in that same vein is that if you misapply or miss an area, it's going to be really goofy and it's not something you can go back and correct where you're going to have one period of the lawn that grows uh, two inches every three days and then the rest of the lawn is going to seemingly not grow at all. And so you'll have these nice long stripes of turf that just grow like wildfire and the rest of it is just kind of laying down doing its thing. Uh, and then the uh, other aspect is, is that in the event you get a disease or uh, any kind of, of, of damage, say, uh, you know, from somebody going out there and spraying bug spray on their feet while they're standing in your grass, all of that damage is going to stay there for an exceptionally long period of time. As long as it's under regulation, it's going to take that much longer for it to recover. So kind of the big drawback there is that uh, if something negative does happen, it's going to be a while to get out. So it's always important to try and plan strategically for what's coming up. Even if you have to treat weeds in the weed control you want to use is cause discoloration. That discoloration is going to stay there for a long period of time. Gotcha. Um, which is a little disheartening to hear you say 28 days because I'm pretty sure I overapplied <laughs> a week ago. My, my grass looks pretty terrible right now. I kind of fried it. Um, so, so I heard somebody saying something about like the first time, is there a difference in the way that you should apply the first time? This is the first time I've ever applied. It was a week ago. Mm -hmm. Is there a difference or the first time every season or the first time you ever apply it to your grass? Is there a difference in that versus later applications? In, in my opinion, again, not scientifically founded. I'm just going to give you my opinion here. In my opinion, yes, because 
the variances in different cultivars of Bermudas are all going to have different tolerances. So in my opinion, the most efficient way to do it and the safest way to do it is start at a half rate and apply every two weeks until you hit your target level of regulation. And then once you're satisfied with your level of regulation, say, you, you know, you go out, you cut the next day after you apply and you're pulling no clippings off or you're pulling half, half a bucket off of clippings and you're like, okay, this is pristine. Then you start tracking your growing de degree days to make your follow-up application. Which is what I should have done. I think I knew I should have done that. <laughs> But I was like, nah, I just want to go for it. I just want to put it down. So I put down the, it was supposed to be, it's somewhere between 0.25 and 0.3. You know, it, I look up on the label basically for my type of, for Tifway 419. Uh -huh. um, you know, and, and it's, it's different for if your grass is half inch or lower versus higher than that for a residential turf versus sports turf that's half an inch or lower. So mine is about half an inch. And so I was going in between, I think it's 0.25 and 0.3. Um, You'll be fine. Well, like I said, I think, I think, and I don't know, and it could have been that I put the right amount in the tank. Maybe I walked too slow. Maybe I overlapped too much. Cause it's not all of my grass. It's just certain areas. I'm like, Ugh, like that just looks super stressed out right now. Um, it's also, you know, it's been hot. So I think part of it is dryness. So maybe I haven't been watering enough. <clears throat> part of it is that, you know, just stress from the initial PGR application. Maybe it was a little too strong. Um, Anyway, just a handful of different things that all together like make my lawn look pretty terrible right now. I'm dead set on recovering. We're supposed to get good rain for the next uh, week and a half anyway. The forecast is looking promising, so hopefully we recover well and then the next couple of weeks I get back to my normal lawn. But at, then it, I'll at that rate, any kind of discoloration is, is going to grow out through the duration of, of your application. I wouldn't worry about it. I was afraid you went out at like 32 ounces per acre or something. Point no. <laughs> your first application. And I was like, boy, you're in for a ride. Uh, <laughs> one of the things I would always recommend is either throw just a little bit of nitrogen in with the tank or uh, even a little bit of foliar iron. Uh, mm -hmm. your, your Lawn Star product right there would just be pristine throw a little bit of that in the tank with it. It may minimize some of that discoloration. Uh, and the other thing you could do too is either irrigate about four hours after the application or go ahead and just cut it four hours after the application and cut off where it made contact with the leaf tissue. There's an in-can surfactant with Tenex. And so a lot of that initial discoloration you get is just where that surfactant sits on the leaf surface and causes a little bit of, uh, of discoloration, a little bit of burn. I'm hoping that when I, I haven't actually, so it, it's been a week and I haven't cut it. <laughs> I've been a little bit afraid to, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to scalp something and then it's going to, you know, I was waiting for it to grow a little bit because there's not, I guess it's not going to cut anything. So that was kind of a, anyway, uh, I'm just hoping, yeah, I think it'll be fine, but <laughs> I mean, I know it'll be fine eventually. I'm just like, I'm ready to get back to my grass. It's only been a week and it feels like it's been forever because <laughs> it's been sitting there and looking kind of crummy, but I'm like, two weeks behind on videos anyway. So nobody gets to see my ugly grass anyway. I guess I get to keep them. Um, you mentioned the growing degree day calendar. Um, just go ahead and talk a little bit more about that. Cause it, it can, I think this way to describe, uh, to describe growing degree days is just uh, the accumulation of heat is the, is the easiest way. And using the accumulation of heat to predict the growth rate of your grass. Uh, the easiest thing in the whole wide world to do, and I wish this was around uh, 15 years ago, 12 years ago, is the Greenkeeper app. Greenkeeperapp.com. You go there, you plug in your rate. Uh, I like to change my growing degree days for Trinax Pack to 200 growing degree days and then time my reapplication interval on that 200 growing degree day interval. Uh, and it's, it's just the, the easiest thing to do. It, so it tracks the temperature for your zip code or what's the deal you put, you have to go in and manually enter the temperature. No, you go in, you put in your zip code, you put in yeah. the rate of your application and the rate of your application, and it'll give you a daily model of your, uh, the amount of suppression that's occurring, uh, what the predicted lifespan of that, of that application of PGR is going to be, and also give you a nice color-coded chart on probably when you should start reapplying. Nice. I like it. I need to go do that. Oh, it's unbelievable. I'm probably going to be a little bit trigger shy at 
I, I already know this about myself. Like when I go to apply again, you know, when I do this later on, I'll probably, maybe I'll do the half rate thing. Maybe I'll go half and wait a little bit. Like when my grass recovers and it's time to apply again. At this point, since you've already gone out at, at 11, that's roughly 11 ounces per acre, I would uh, stay there. Stay there, and then what you'll notice is probably somewhere around the 4th of July, you're going to be like, ah, I could, I could probably use a little bit more regulation, and then you're going to want to up your rate probably closer to that 13 ounces per acre. So uh, I, I, at this point, the worst is already, you've already experienced the worst there is <laughs> to experience, so uh, I, I, I don't think there's really need to go back. So is that, so the first time, is that true? Like it's more stressful to the grass the first time and later on? In my experience, it has been that way. Okay. So normally when I come out of the gate, the very first application I make is just kind of a teaser application where I would put out like 10 ounces per acre. And then my next application, I'd bump up to 12. And then usually my next one, I'd probably bump up to like 14 and then ride that for the duration of the season. Left Tool had a question. Do you remember what your question was? Uh, oh, I have two. Sod. Sod question? Sod Farm. Uh, hey there, Mr. Matt Martin is Left Tool owner and operator of Left Tool Studios here. Okay. Hey, uh, so I got new sod outside of my house here. Uh-huh. And uh, Right Tool over here is thinking that uh, the sod company put some PGR on it before they delivered it. Uh -huh. PGR? EGR. Yeah, that was right. Uh, this is a two-parter. One, do you think they did that? And two, is it okay to put PGR on, on new sod? Like, I mean, you get your sod, you put it in, you're wanting as much growth as possible. Is it something you should do? I don't know. My sod's not really growing. That's just, it's, it's yeah. growing very slow, which is extremely kind of, slow, kind of cool. It's, I don't, it's Tahoma I 31. Sure. I don't know if you've heard of Tahoma 31. That mm -hmm. came out of OSU, but, and, and maybe there's something to that. I almost wondered if there's something about Tahoma 31 where they've genetically engineered this thing to grow slower or whatever. Like it's actually, it's a cool feature if it's meant to do that or it's green. It's just not growing very fast. <laughs> yes. It, okay. Uh, kind of step by step here. Do they PGR uh, uh, turf at side farms? Yes. hundred percent. Uh, do they always do that just before delivery? Not necessarily always the case, but it wouldn't shock me if they did do that. Uh, two, uh, Tahoma 31 does grow genetically much slower than your other uh, turf types where you're just not going to get the violent upward growth on it. Uh, three, should you apply PGR to it? That's totally up to you. Is it going to make a difference? Is it going to be a game changer with something like Tahoma 31? Hey, you know, probably not. I would say experience your first year with it kind of kind of get grips on it if you if you're having trouble getting the color out of it that you like then go ahead and put it on a pgr program and get a little squirrely with uh with your different foliars to try and 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 reach that target color response you're looking for so i feel like the, the color's really good you know places that, that stay wet like i said it's been dry so it's been watering but it's been the color is really good where it's good um seed heads like crazy yeah in the sun in the sides, yes. On the sides of the house, it looks gorgeous in the shade, which has kind of been surprising for us up to this point. But uh, yeah, transplant shock is a very real thing, and it doesn't matter if you planted a magnolia tree right now and it had adequate moisture. Chances are, there's a very big probability it would completely defoliate and and repopulate new leaves kind of the same thing with turf it's gone from one environment where it's very accustomed to growing in and now all of a sudden it has to send roots into a completely foreign soil structure that it has no history with whatsoever so there's going to be an, an adaptation a learning curve there that has to take place well it kind of freaks out the plant and it wants to reproduce because it senses all the stress and it's afraid it may die so it wants to reproduce and how does it do that? It sends off new uh, seed heads. So eventually it will tailor out and level off once it begins to really root in well and become accustomed to its new soil environment. Uh, and that's why probably it's happening easier where it's a little bit cooler on the side of the house than being in direct sunlight and under intense heat there. It may be a little bit more stressful on the plant and that's why you're seeing the seed heads there. Which kind of confirmed 
everything that we thought. I don't know. I mean, just that's, I, I'm learning things here. I'm learning a ton. Hopefully other people are <laughs> learning something, but um, <clears throat> thank you. Now, wait, did you, you had another question? Uh, yeah. Matt Martin left tool here from the, uh, from the logo, the guy on the left side of the logo. Hey, uh, I was just curious, does your wife or maybe a cousin or something like that, does anyone, you know, call you just Matt or does everyone call you Matt Martin? That's, that's a question I I've been had for a while. <laughs> hey, hang on. I rip, I rip my, my hair. It's, it's funny. It's funny. I no no one in my family calls me Matt. It's either Boo is is kind of my nickname around my family and my house. Uh, my wife calls me Bear, and uh, every friend that I have calls me Matt Martin. I've really? never been just Matt. It's always been Matt Martin. <laughs> it's been a running joke since I was in probably fifth grade. That's funny. Cause that's yeah. I, he said that the other day. I, I asked him, yeah, maybe a week or so ago. It's like he was talking about getting this phone call with Matt Martin. I was like, does anybody call him just Matt? And he just started laughing. He's like, I've never heard anyone call him Matt. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why I say Matt Martin every single time, but I do. Every, you're not the only one. It, it's it's just a thing. I don't know why. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. Well, we got the important question answered. I that guess, was all I came yeah. to this chat for. So. <laughs> uh, is there anything else about Plant Growth Regulator that you feel like we didn't, like that you just had like these little tidbits over time, these little knowledge bombs you could drop on us that we haven't covered? Or I, I feel like I learned a ton already, but. I, yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's one of the things that when you do it, just understand the level of precision that's at play. Uh, it's, it's not something you, you can really just get out there and, and kind of, you know, do a little squirt here and a little squirt there. You know, it's all about even coverage and even, uh, nozzle selection, making sure you're choosing a nozzle to get adequate coverage across the plant to, uh, ensure the, the, uh, that uptake is going to, is going to happen well. So, um, yeah, it, it, it just, the only thing I would say is just, is just be careful, start small, start low, and then work your way into it and everybody will be fine. You said even application, but real quick, um, that reminded me of something that John Ware also said. There was somebody who commented, I'm pretty sure it was on a budget lawns video, who said something about a product that's specifically for edges. It's a plant growth regulator, but they market it, I think, specifically to your edges so that you have to weedy and edge less often. Mm -hmm. And so budget lawns and I were talking in a group message and, and John Ware says, just use the edge rate of Teenex. What's the, so is that his thing? I don't know if I, I don't think I saw that on the label, but people talk about the edge rate. So I, you could go a little bit higher on the edges to cut down on your weed eating edging maybe. Uh, yeah, I've, I've never heard of T-Next use as an edging product. Edgeless is the, is the one that's out right. there, but you know, making, making a double pass on your edges or even flipping your fan nozzle sideways and, and hitting that edge a little more aggressively. I, I could see you doing that. Okay. So this is something that these, lawn forum people have come up with over time it's <laughs> probably <laughs> oh man but not so not completely looked down upon then maybe no, no <clears throat> definitely not and it's it's one of the things that the, the longer you spray pgrs the more problems you're you're going to the more mistakes you're going to make i guess is is the way and even when you make like a trim pass around the outside of your property or whatever the case may be, you'll find you accidentally double spray there and you've got this nice golden bronze ring around the outside of the property. It just happens. Gotcha. Were you about to I, yeah, I just wanted to clarify something uh, that I've kind of learned just in case for the viewer out there who's not as smart as at things as I am. Because I had always understood plant growth, growth, plant growth regulator as kind of marketed at me was just something like, hey, you want to mow your yard less? Put this on there. And so for me, hearing about it a while ago, whenever I heard about it first, I don't know if it was last summer or maybe this summer before or something, but it was like, why would I put that on there? I want my yard as thick as possible. And so that was my misconception of PGR was, I don't want that on my yard because I want the thickest, greenest thing possible. But now learning about PGR and what exactly it does. That's not the case. I mean, you do mow less, but it's not going to thin your yard. You know, it's no. going to keep it from growing. 
Exactly. Exactly. The yeah. rest of the plant function continues just as happy as could be and normal is just not growing upward as much. So all yeah. your, your regular lateral growth and everything else still functions as normal. Yeah. Which is just a crazy feat of science. If you think about that, like Isn't that nuts. <laughs> I think I told our dad about it. I said, yeah, there's stuff that can make your grass grow less. So theoretically you could cut your mowing in half. Like if you mow twice a week, you might be able to mow once a week or people who mow once a week might be able to mow once every two weeks. But your yard's still thick. Stays right, thick. right, right, right. No, that's and yeah, the look on his face, he was like, that, that's a thing <laughs> that exists. And I was like, yeah, you know, I guess I didn't really think, but that's, that's kind of crazy. That's, that's Heisen turf stuff right there. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's unbelievable, uh -huh. really. Well, anyway, Matt, I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to, to help us learn some things about plant growth regulator and, and help me learn how to do it right next time. <laughs> I should have waited until after we chatted before I sprayed my PGI. I got in a rush. That's, you know, you get, you get the itch and you want to scratch it and just go spray something because John Ware's over here telling you it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Yeah. It's, you. it's when the Amabox, Am Amazon box shows up and you gotta, you gotta hurry up and open it. You know? Exactly. So. What did people do before sliced bread? <laughs> I, I don't know. I think that's the point. Terrible. Uh, <laughs> Matt, where can people find out more about you? Where can they find out what you're doing? Uh, on the boob to uh, YouTube, it is uh, the grass factor, uh, uh, facebook.com forward slash grass factor, or even turfsupradio.com every Turfs. Monday through Friday, four to 6 PM. I'm live. And live on, yeah, live on YouTube. Yeah. On uh, grass factor. Sundays at 9 PM. Sundays at 9 PM. Well, there you have it. So thanks, everybody. Hope you learned something just like we did. And Matt, thank you again. Yes, sir. Huh? <laughs> You're about to put on deodorant or something. <laughs> okay. All right, sir. We're recording? We were recording. We're good to go. Edit that! Edit! Edit! You can't, you can't say nutlets, apparently. Yeah, nutlets. Oh, that's right. That's right. Stupid nuts, Edge. Okay, so are they called nutlets? That's the question of the hour. They are called nutlets. Why that is the case, I do not know. Uh, but indeed, they are called nutlets. If you've ever, have you ever dug up nuts, Edge, to see the nutlets? I don't know if I've seen, I've seen your videos where you dig them up and you show them. I don't think I've ever dug it up to pull them out, but yeah, I've seen. Yeah, they just have these videos. weird, almost look like nodules on a soybean root or something. But I said that in our last video and everybody commented, they're like, oh, new word of the day, nutlets. That's my new favorite word. And I was like, new word? I'm pretty sure that's the right word. <laughs> yeah, that's actually scientifically accurate. They oh, are nutlets as a matter of fact. Well, everyone laughed at us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Made us look foolish. They were a mockery on the YouTube. <laughs> no, they were mad at your Razorback shirt. That's what it was. <laughs> look at, check out this hat though. I know, I saw it, and I'm like, you know, I really can't be mad about it. Because I know. I found this on eBay, and I was super proud of that. It was, uh, yeah, a great find. <laughs>